Hey guys, this is the video lesson for lesson 5.6 on the coordinate plane. So let's start out at the top. Uh, we're going to read a little bit. We're going to read about quadrants. And quadrants are just the four sections that make up the coordinate plane. So this whole thing is the coordinate plane. And notice when we name quadrants, we name them with Roman numerals. So this is quadrant one, and we're going counterclockwise. This is quadrant two, quadrant three, and this is quadrant four. So you do need to know where the quadrants are, and you do need to identify points in those quadrants. So let's take a look at the type of things you need to do. In example one, it's going to ask you to do two things. It says, identify the ordered pair that names point C, and then identify the quadrant in which it is located. So let's start out with the first part. Identify the ordered pair that names point C. So point C is right here, and the ordered pair is the pair of numbers that identify where it is. So when I'm going over, I start at the origin here and I go over to one and a half and up to one. So that means my coordinates are one and a half, one. Now the second part says then identify the quadrant it's located in. Well, if you remember from the above, this is quadrant one. So you could just label it Q Roman numeral one. It looks like a capital I. So that's what you have to do in example one. Now, example two is similar, uh, but we have two, one different thing to do. So let's take a look at it. It says, identify the point located at negative one and a half, negative one. And then identify the quadrant in which it is located. So let's start out with the point at negative one and a half, one. So start at the origin here, and I go over to the negative one and a half, which means over to the left here. And then the second one is negative one, so I have to go down to negative one, which is right here. So the first part of our answer is going to be point B. Now the second part is to identify the quadrant. So when we go up, remember this is quadrant one going counterclockwise, this is quadrant two, and down here where point B is, it is quadrant three. So our answer for that one is going to be Q Roman numeral three. It looks like three eyes. All right, so that's what we're doing. Now we're going to have you, have you guys try some. So you're going to use this coordinate plane to answer the questions on the top of the next page. So we go to the next page. I already cut off. I brought it over here so I don't have to be flipping back there. So what I want you to do is I want you to do A and B. And when you're done, pause the video while you do them. And when you're done, restart it. Go ahead. All right, let's see how you did. So in A, it says, oops, sorry, trying to make that bigger. It says, identify the ordered pair that names point A, then identify the quadrant in which it is located. So let's go down and find point A right here. Now remember, you're, you're doing this on the page to the left in your book, though. So I go over to the negative 1 up to the positive one and a half. So that means the coordinates are negative one, positive one and a half. I'll show you again in case you didn't get that. So I went over to the negative one right here, up to the positive one and a half. Now the quadrant, remember if this is quadrant one, this is quadrant two here. So the quadrant is going to be Q two. All right, if you had that for A, good. If not, learn from your mistake, as I do B. So in B, it says, identify the point located at 1, negative 2. So that means I go over to the positive 1 and down to the negative 2, which would be right there. So the point is going to be point E. Now it says, then identify the quadrant in which it is located. So. This is quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three. This is quadrant four. So it's going to be Q, and a Roman numeral four looks like IV. All right, that's quadrant four. All right, if you had both of those, you're kicking butt. But now we're going to go down to part three, or example three. These are where we're going to talk about reflections. And when we think about what a reflection is, I want you to think of when you look in the mirror. Um, it's like symmetry, too, in math, if things are symmetrical. 
So in example three, it says name the ordered pair that is a reflection of negative three, two across the x-axis. So let's first find negative three, two. So when I go over to negative three, one, two, three, up to positive two, this is where negative three, two is. Now, the coordinates for the reflection. Now it says, notice it says reflection across the x-axis. That's important. So let me highlight that in red. So the x-axis, see the x right there, is this axis here. So that's where you have to reflect across it. Now, in blue is the original point, negative 3, 2. So the reflection is going to be, see how this is too high? Here's the x-axis. You go up 2. The reflection is going to go down 2. See how it's the same distance from the x-axis. So we just have to name this point right here, which would be negative 3, negative 2. So the answer would be negative 3, negative 2. That's the reflection. Now, for this next part, it says name the ordered pair that is a reflection of each point across the x-axis. So each one we're going across the x-axis, and I'll do the first one with you together. So in the first one, we have to find the reflection of 1, negative 4. So, let me zoom in. We'll go find 1, negative 4. So I'm going to put a dot right there. That's the original point. Now the reflection has to go for this. It's going to go across the x-axis here. So, notice my point is 4 down from the x-axis. 1, 2, 3, 4. So my reflection's got to be 4 up. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to put a dot right there. That's where my reflection is going to be. And now I need to name those, name the coordinates. So that is positive one and a positive four. Because I went over the one up to the four. So your answer for A is one, four. All right. Now here is your job. Your job is to try D and E on your own. Um, pause the video. When you do D and E, remember you're writing the reflection across the x-axis for each of those. We'll then go over it and see if you were right. All right, go ahead, pause it now. All right, let's see how you did. So let me start by erasing that. And in D, we have to find the reflection of negative 2, across the x-axis. So let's find negative 2, 5 first. All right, so negative 2, 5 would be way up here. So I'm going to mark that in blue. Now the reflection is going to go across the x-axis. So if I am 5 high, my reflection is going to be 5 low, which would be right here. And I'm going to mark this spot in red. And that is going to be for my coordinates. Remember, you start at the origin, go over to the negative 2, down to the negative 5. So it's going to be negative 2, comma, negative 5. Oops, sorry about that. If you had negative 2, negative 5, good. Give yourself a C. Now in point E we had to find, or in problem E, we had to find the reflection of negative 3, negative 1. So let me erase some of this stuff here. Alright. So first I'm going to plot where negative 3, negative 1 is. So if I go over to the negative 3 and down to the negative 1, that's going to be right there. So I'm going to mark that with a little red X. Now the reflection has to go across the x-axis again. And here's what you got to notice. Notice I'm down 1. The reflection has got to be up 1. So it's going to be right here where my arrow is pointing. So I'm going to mark that with a blue dot. And I need the coordinates for that. So I go over to the negative 3, up to the positive 1. So my answer should be negative 3, positive 1. All right. So... How'd you do on D and E? 
Hopefully you did well. If not, just kind of learn from it, and the more you practice, the better you get. All right, last. In problem four, example four, we're going to do this one, and then you're going to try F. So example four says, let me get my arrow ready. Kendall is building a square fence. She places fence posts at the locations on the grid. What is the location of the post that reflects negative four, four across the y-axis? So take a look over at the grid. And she's built, so she's building a square fence and she paces, places fence post at these four corners. So that's where her fence posts are. Now the example says, what is the location? Let me get my arrow ready. What is the location of the post that reflects negative four, four across the y axis? So let's find negative four, four first. So remember, when I'm doing this, I go over to the negative four, up to the positive four. So I'll highlight that in blue. All right, that's the original location. Now in this one, it says we're reflecting it across the y axis. So watch how this is different than the previous page. Here is the y axis. Now notice my original point is one, two, three, four spots to the left. So my reflection needs to be one, two, three, four spots to the right. So this point here where my arrow is pointing is going to be our answer. So I'm gonna put a little dot right there. And the answer would be, we need those coordinates now. We go over to the positive four, up to the positive four. So it would be four, comma, four. All right. Now in F, you're going to do that one on your own. So pause the video, do problem F, and restart it when you're done. Go. All right, let's see how you did. It says Kendall also placed a fence post at negative four, negative four. What is the location of the post that reflects negative four, negative four across the y-axis? So first, let's find negative four, negative four. Okay, I go over to the ne negative four and down to the negative four. So right here is going to be my original point. Now I'm reflecting this across the y-axis again. So notice I'm four to the left of the y-axis, so my reflection is gonna be four to the right. So right here is gonna be my reflection. So I'm gonna put a dot right there and I need those coordinates. So let's see what you got. Start at the origin, I went over to four, down to negative four. So you should have four comma negative four as your answer. All right, so that's it with the examples with me today. Uh, I know if you're absent, you're gonna be working on one through four below most likely. So if you have any questions, make sure you ask me and thanks for watching.